Good morning. This is Cindy Conway from the Ohio State SNAP Ed office. I am going to be covering how to enter youth program data in this third tutorial session uh, using the FY14 Ohio SNAP Ed Excel Monthly Report template. In the first tutorial, I showed you how to enter adult programming information. In the second tutorial, I followed up with teen program information. And now we will concentrate on entering youth program information. For youth programs, we will use three of the four tabs below in the Excel template. We will use the program log in, uh, tab to enter program log information. We will use the youth and teen demographic tab to enter uh, demographic information. Again, this is at the group level and uh, you'll have one row per classroom. And then we have the youth behavior data tab which will look a little different to you than what you may have seen in the June regional meetings. I did make a few uh, changes to this that will hopefully make it more uh, straightforward to use. So let's begin with the program log information. Uh, the program log is the same tool you use for all of your programs, adults, teens, or youth. So in this example, um, I'm going to be showing you a youth series that consisted of three sessions. So in this session, or in this series, the first session had one volunteer, and it started at 10.30 and ended at 11 o'clock. The date was 10-4. Uh, the county was Franklin, teacher's initials. Uh, the eligibility is four for schools, because we determined eligibility by the school lunch um, eligibility data. The audience information is two. The target audience is youth, not in summer food because this was a program done at an elementary school. And the type of direct education format is three, which is for youth. Moving on to part two, there were 25 students in the class. The partner agency was Columbus, Columbus Public Schools. And the specific school or delivery site was Linden STEM Academy. This is a school delivery site category. It was a series the first of three sessions. It lasted 30 minutes. The topic was nutrition. So if you look down here, you can see there's two primary program content options, nutrition or food safety. And then the tar specific targeted message, if you flip over the program log, was 43 for eat breakfast. So I have entered the data from the program log for this first session. And now I will move on to entering the youth demographics. I'll scroll over to the youth and teen demographics tab. And beginning uh, with the first question, these were fourth graders. The date of the program was 10-4. And it, again, it was youth not in summer food. We had 25 students. The delivery site was Linden STEM Academy. It was a series, the first of three sessions. And referencing the ODE schools data file that can be found on the FMP website, I used the first tab called Free and Reduced Lunch, looked up Linden STEM Academy, and saw that 87.47% of the students were eligible. Then utilizing the second tab of the ODE schools data file, uh, which is called Demographics, I looked up Linden STEM Academy and saw that 48% of the students were female, 52 were male, 1% um, were American Indians, 79% were black, 13% were white, 1% were Asian, and 6% were other races. 5% were Hispanic, and 95% were non-Hispanic. And so now I have completed the uh, youth demographics for this program. Because it's the first program in the series, I will also have some youth pretest uh, data to enter as well. Now, even though there were 25 children in this class, I'm only going to enter three students' data just for the uh, illustration purposes. So I will come over to the Youth Behavior Data tab and begin to show you how to input information into this tab. As I mentioned earlier, this does have a different layout than what we was presented at the regional meetings. Um, essentially what I have done is I have 
only included uh, the behavior metrics in one set of columns. Before we used to have a pretest set of columns and a post-test set of columns. This time we only have the behavior columns which can be found in columns I through N. In order to designate whether it's pretest or post-test, we will enter that information in column F. So we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, we need to uh, go ahead and enter some program log information. So again, the target audience was youth not in summer food. The start time, the reason we put the start time here is because we do know that we may have to do several programs at a particular school on a particular date. And so by inputting the start time here, it will allow us to more accurately tease out which behavior data corresponded to which particular program. And so, because you cannot teach two programs on the same date at the same time. So, again, this program started at 1030. We don't need to worry about the end time in this instance because we're using this for identification purposes of the program. The date was 104 and the county was Franklin. The delivery site was Linden STEM Academy. The test interval, this was the pretest, so we will it's coded one for pretest and two for post-test. Now I can begin entering the data that the uh, youth participant provided on the uh, pretest form. This student indicated that they are a girl and that they are nine years old. For breakfast, she said she sometimes eats breakfast. Um, she some uh, hardly ever eats different kinds of fruits. She uh, chooses snacks that are healthy sometimes. Uh, she sometimes eats food from most my plate, or I'm sorry, she hardly ever eats any type of vegetables. She eats food from most my plate food groups sometimes and she is sometimes active or she sometimes does things like run, play sports, dance, etc. So I have entered the person, the first person's um, data into the uh, Excel spreadsheet. So I am moving on now to the second child's data for pretest. Again, the information in columns A through F will be the same. Again, the school delivery site is Linden STEM Academy. It's pretest. This child was a boy, age nine, and his pretest scores were sometimes for breakfast, sometimes for fruits, sometimes for snacks, hardly ever for vegetables, um, hardly ever for my plate food groups, and sometimes for being physically active. And then the last child's uh, evaluation data after we input the program log identification information. This child was a girl, age 10. For breakfast, she indicated sometimes. For uh, the different kinds of fruits, she indicated almost always. For um, choosing snacks that are healthy, she indicated sometimes. For different kinds of vegetables, she indicated sometimes. My plate was hardly ever. And uh, doing things like running, playing sports, dancing, etc., was sometimes. So that is how I would enter the pretest data for this youth program. Now, let's say it's a week later and we're back to do session two of three. For session two of three, we actually only have two forms we need to worry about entering data for. We'll have our program log, and then of course we'll have our youth and teen demographic form. So going back to the program log tab, um, a lot of this information will be similar. Uh, this person had their program at about the same time. It was just a week later. 
The county name stays the same. Eligibility and audience information are the same. And this time, again, there were 25 students. Uh, filling out part two of the program log, a lot of this is going to stay similar to what it was last time. It's a series, except now it's session two of three. It lasted 30 minutes. The topic was nutrition. And in this case, the targeted message was choose healthy snacks, which is code 44. So that is all I need to do to enter the program log information for this program. Moving over to the Youth and Teen Demographics tab, I can now enter the demographic information, which again will be very similar to what we entered from last week. The grade is 4, the date is 10-11, the county is Franklin, the audience is youth non-SFSP. There were 25 students on this particular day, Linden STEM Academy, uh, Series 2 of 3, and again, the uh, eligibility information from the ODE schools data file indicated 47.87%, 48% were female, 52 were male, 1% American Indian, 79% black, 13% white, 1% Asian, 6% other race, 5% Hispanic, and 95% non-Hispanic. And now I'm finished entering session 2's data. And I'm going to save what I've done so that I don't lose it. And then, let's say now it's a week later and we have come back from teaching the final session of this three session series. I will go to the program log tab and I will enter the program log information. I had one volunteer. Start and end times were 10.30 and 11 o'clock. The date is 10.18. The county is Franklin. Eligibility and audience information. Uh, it's youth in summer food, or I'm sorry, not in summer food, and it's a direct education youth program. On this particular day, only 22 students were there. Columbus Public Schools was our partner. Linden STEM Academy was our delivery site. It was a series, session three of three. It lasted 30 minutes. The content was nutrition, um, and the message was use nutrition facts to make food choices which is code 45. So I have entered the program log information for this class and now I'm going to enter the team demographics or I'm sorry the youth demographics. Uh, it was grade 4 the date is 1018 Franklin County youth non-summer food there were 22 individuals this day. Linden STEM Academy it was a series session 3 of 3 the uh, free and reduced lunch eligibility remained 87.47, as well as all the other demographic characteristics. As I mentioned in the teen tutorial, ODE updates their data about once a year. So for us, that update should come about December or January um, of this fiscal year. So that file, the data will change and be updated and you'll receive a notification when that change happens. So just make sure that you are using current statistics to report youth and teen demographics. And then finally, because this was uh, the last session, I collected youth data using the youth uh, evaluation form post-test. And again, if everyone would have filled one out, I would have had 22 sets of data to enter. But for the sake of example, I'm only going to enter three. The target audience is youth non-summer food. The scheduled start time in this case was also 1030. The date is 1018. County is Franklin. It's Linden STEM Academy. And now my test interval will be two for post-test. The first student was a girl, age nine and she indicated she almost always eats breakfast, almost always eats different kinds of fruits, sometimes chooses healthy snacks, uh, almost always eats different kinds of vegetables, almost always eats foods from my most, from most my plate food groups, and almost always does things like run, dance, and play sports. The next individual, after we fill in the identifying information for this program,
Again, it's a post-test interval. Uh, the gender was boy, age 9. And he said he almost always eats breakfast, almost always eats different kinds of fruits, almost always chooses healthy snacks, sometimes eats different kinds of vegetables, almost always eats foods from different my plate food groups, and uh, does things like run, play sports, dance, etc. almost always. And then the last uh, participant's information after we enter the identifying information was a little girl age 10 and she almost always eats breakfast sometimes eats different kinds of fruits sometimes chooses snacks that are healthy sometimes eats different kinds of vegetables almost always eats foods from my, most my plate food groups and almost always does things like run dance or play sports so this is all you need to do then to fill out the youth uh, evaluation form for the behavior data. It's, it's pretty simple and I think you'll find that the process with practice becomes pretty, pretty routine. So to recap, when you are reporting youth programs, you'll use the program log tab and the teen and youth demographics tab. And then if it's the first session, you'll also enter pretest data on the youth behavior data tab. And if it's the last session, you will enter post-test evaluation data here. When you're doing summer food, it will work the same way. It's just that your target audience will be five for youth and summer food, and you may wish to collect your post-test evaluation data at the end of the second to last day because we find that a lot of uh, sponsor agencies end up canceling that last session. So you don't want to lose the opportunity to collect valuable post-test data because of an agency cancellation. Again, if you have any questions about any of the data entry processes, please contact Cindy Conway at conway.113 at osu.edu. This concludes this tutorial.